Hi, welcome to this quick maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the GCSE further math topic of adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. And this is part one. There's going to be part one, part two, and part three. Part one will be quite straightforward algebraic fractions. Part two will be some algebraic fractions where they've got denominators that have been factorized. And then part three will be algebraic fractions where we've got to factorize the denominators and then add together or subtract the algebraic fractions. Okay, so let's have a look at part one. So part one, we're going to look at some quite straightforward algebraic fractions. If you have studied GCSE maths already, then hopefully you've seen a lot of these at GCSE level. Uh, but let's recap them now. So first of all, we've got simplify 5x plus 4 over 9 plus x minus 7 over 2. So we're going to be adding these algebraic fractions together. So when we're adding together fractions, it's fantastic if we can get the same denominator. So if we want to get the same denominator, well, let's have a look at the denominators here. We've got 9 and we've got 2. So I'm thinking 18 because we've got 9, 18 and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So we can multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 2 and both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 9. And that'll give us both two fractions with 18 on the denominator. So let's have a look at multiplying both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 2. So if we double the numerator, we'll get 10x plus 8. And then if we double the denominator, well, doubling 9 would be 18. So we've doubled both the numerator and denominator for the first fraction. Now let's have a look at the second fraction. And then if we have a look at our second fraction, well, we want to get 18 on the denominator. And to get from 2 to 18, we'll multiply by 9. So we need to multiply both the numerator and denominator for this fraction by 9. So if we multiply everything on the numerator by 9, well, 9 times x would be 9x. And then 9 times minus 7 would be minus 63. So we've multiplied the numerator by 9. Now let's multiply the denominator by 9. And 9 times 2 is equal to 18. So that's fantastic. We've now got two fractions with the same denominators. We've got 10x plus 8 over 18 plus 9x minus 63 over 18. Now we want to add together these fractions. So to add together two fractions with the same denominators, we just add the numerators together. So the denominators will stay the same. So it's still going to be over 18. And now we just need to add together the numerators. So let's deal with the x's to begin with. 10x's plus 9x's would be 19x's. So that'll be 19x. And then in terms of the numbers, we've got 8 plus minus 63. So if we do 8 plus minus 63, so if you're adding minus 63, you're going to go down 63. So we're going to do 8 subtract 63, and that's equal to minus 55. So minus 55. So that means our answer will be 19x minus 55 over 18. Now I'm just going to check and see if we can factorize the numerator. No, because if we could factorize the numerator, we could potentially cancel this down, but we can't. So that's it. So if we're asked to simplify 5x plus 4 over 9 plus x minus 7 over 2, the answer will be 19x minus 55 over 18. And that's it. Okay, question number two. Question number two, we've been asked to simplify 15x plus 8 over 3 subtract 2x minus 3 over 9. So here we're subtracting, so that's going to be important. We're going to be subtracting these fractions. And the second thing is the two fractions have got different denominators. So let's find a common denominator. Now, some people might look at this and think, well, 27, because 3 times 9 is 27. Now, you can go for 27 if you wanted to, but I think a much easier approach for this question would be just to multiply both the numerator and denominator of the first fraction by 3, because then that would give us 9 as the denominator. So we can just multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 3, and then that would be in ninths as well, and then we can just take them away. So let's multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 3. So timesing the denominator by 3 would be 9, and that's why we're doing it. Now let's multiply the numerator by 3. 3 times 15x would be 45x, and then we've got plus, and 3 times 8 would be 24. So 15x plus 8 over 3, when we find an equivalent fraction with 9 as the denominator, would be 45x plus 24 over 9. Okay, and then subtract, and then this fraction already has 9 on the denominator, so we can just write it out. 2x minus 3 over 9. So that fraction was already 9, so that's fantastic. Okay, now we just need to take them away because now we've got two fractions with the same denominator. They're both ninths. And if you remember, if you're taking away two fractions with the same denominator, you just take away the numerators. So we need to do this numerator, take away that numerator. Now, one thing to be careful here is the fact that we're subtracting this numerator. So particularly whenever we're subtracting this minus 3, we're going to be subtracting minus 3. So we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so we've now got this fraction, take away this fraction. Well, it's going to be ninths in terms of our answer. So we've got 45x plus 24, and we're going to take away 2x minus 3. So let's deal with the x's to begin with. We've got 45x's, and we're taking away 2x's. And 45x's take away 2x's would be 43x's. Okay, so we've dealt with the x's. Now let's deal with these numbers. We've got 24 subtract minus 3, 
or 24 subtract a negative 3. So we have minus and a minus, and when we subtract a negative, it goes back up. So 24 subtract negative 3 would be the same as 24 add 3, which would be 27. So it's going to then be plus 27, because 24 minus minus 3 is 27. And that's it, and we've got our answer. And let's have a look, can this be cancelled down? No, it can't, so that's it. So the answer would be 43x plus 27 over 9. So if we were asked to simplify 15x plus 8 over 3, subtract 2x minus 3 over 9, the answer would be 43x plus 27 all over 9. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So next question, we've been asked to simplify 4 over x plus 7 plus 5 over x minus 3. So this question is a bit different than the ones we've looked at previously, because the ones we've looked at previously, we've had whole numbers on the denominators. But this time, we've actually got our variables on the denominator. We've got our x's on the denominator here. We've got x plus 7 and x minus 3. Okay, so we want to add together these fractions, so we still need to get a common denominator. And to get a common denominator here, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x minus 3. And we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 7. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by that denominator, and the numerator and denominator of this fraction by that denominator. So let's do that. So if we multiplied both of these by x minus 3, what would we get? So we're going to multiply the numerator by x minus 3. So I'm just going to write 4, and then I'm going to put in brackets x minus 3. I'm just putting them beside each other, because remember in maths, if you put a number beside a bracket, it means you're going to times them together. So I'm just putting it beside it. We'll expand it in a second. And then in terms of the denominator, we've got x plus 7, and we're going to times it by x minus 3. So we're just going to write x plus 7, and then in brackets, x minus 3. And that just means we're multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by x minus 3. Okay, so that's our first fraction. We've multiplied both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by that denominator. Then we've got our plus sign, and now we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 7. So let's do that. So we've got our 5. We're going to times it by x plus 7. So we're just going to do 5 and then in brackets x plus 7. I like to just put them beside each other to begin with and then I'll expand afterwards. Okay, now we need to multiply this denominator by x plus 7. Now we could if we wanted to write x minus 3 and then x plus 7 in brackets. It would be the same as this but the other way around. But remember in maths that if you're multiplying two numbers together it doesn't actually matter which way around you write the numbers. You could write 2 times 5 or 5 times 2. So here rather than writing in x minus 3, so rather than writing x minus 3 and then in brackets x plus 7, which looks a little bit different than this denominator, but it is actually the same. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to write it the other way around. I'm going to do x minus 3 times x plus 7, but I'm actually just going to write x plus 7 and then x minus 3. So I'm just going to write the same denominator as this one. Okay, so what we've done is we multiply both the numerator and denominator of that fraction by x minus 3 and the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x plus 7. Okay, now the next step. So my next step now would be to expand the brackets on the numerators. I tend not to expand the brackets on the denominators because you might actually find that something cancels out later and it's actually handy to actually have the denominators factorized like this. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna expand the brackets on the numerators. So let's start off with this fraction here. I'm gonna do four times x, which is four x, and then we've got minus, and then four times three would be 12. So when we expand this bracket, whenever we do four times x minus three, we get four x minus 12. I'm going to keep the denominator as this, so I'm going to write it as x plus 7 and then x minus 3. I'm just going to keep it factorised just in case later on we're able to cancel something down. And then plus, okay, now let's have a look at this numerator. 5 times x would be 5x, and then 5 times 7 would be plus 35. And then again, we're going to keep this factorised, so x plus 7 and then in brackets x minus 3. So we've just expanded the brackets on the numerators. Okay, so now we've got two fractions with the same denominators. Now let's just add together the numerators, because remember, if we've got two fractions with the same denominators, you can just add together the numerators. So I'm going to add together the numerators and see what we get. So in terms of the denominator, it'll say the same as x plus 7, and then in brackets, x minus 3. And then in terms of the numerator, let's deal with the x's to begin with. We've got 4x's plus 5x's. Well, 4x's plus 5x's is 9x's. And then we've got minus 12 plus 35. Well, minus 12 plus 35, if you're at minus 12 and you got 35, you get to 23. So it'll be plus 23. So that's it. We've added together those fractions. Now what I like to do is I like to just double check and see if I can factorize this, the numerator, because I might be able to factorize that. And then you might sometimes spot that one of these brackets is on the numerator and then you can cancel down. But actually, 9x and 23, you can actually cancel that down. So that's it. We're finished. So if we were asked to simplify 4 over x plus 7 plus 5 over x minus 3, the answer would be 9x plus 23 over x plus 7 x minus 3. And that's it. Okay, and let's have a look at our last example. So the last example we're going to look at in part one will be to simplify 10 over 2x plus 1, subtract 7 over 1 minus x. 
Okay, so let's have a look at this. So this one's a little bit different than the last one because we've got a subtract rather than an add, but we'll follow the same steps. We'll first of all need to get a common denominator. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 1 minus x, and then both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 2x plus 1. So let's do that. So we've got our numerator. We're going to times it by 1 minus x, so it's going to be 10, and then in brackets 1 minus x. So just multiply the numerator by 1 minus x. Now we're going to times the denominator by 1 minus x. So that'll be then 2x plus 1, and then in brackets 1 minus x. And we're not going to expand this denominator because it might actually be handy actually having it factorized. And I tend to just keep it factorized. Okay, and then we've got our subtract. And then in terms of our second fraction, we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2x plus 1. So times in the numerator by 2x plus 1 will be 7, and then in brackets 2x plus 1. And then we're going to times the denominator by 2x plus 1, but rather than writing 1 minus x and then in brackets 2x plus 1, I'm going to write it in this order here, so the same order as the other one. So it'll be 2x plus 1 and then 1 minus x. Remember, it doesn't actually matter which way around you write these, and I like to just match them so they're the same. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the brackets on both the numerators. So let's expand both the brackets on the numerator. So let's do 10 times 1 minus x and see what we get. So we've got 10 times 1, so that's equal to 10, and then 10 times minus x would be minus 10x. So that's what we get when we expand that bracket on the numerator there, and we'll keep the denominator as 2x plus 1, and then 1 minus x. Okay, and then we've got subtract, and let's expand our bracket here. So 7 times 2x is 14x, and then 7 times 1 will be 7, so plus 7. And that's still over 2x plus 1, and then in brackets 1 minus x. Okay, so that's fantastic. So now we've got two fractions with the same denominators, and we can actually take them away now and see what we get. So I'm just going to write the denominator as 2 x plus 1 and then in brackets 1 minus x. Okay now let's have a look at the numerators and see what that will be whenever we take them away. So here we've got the 10 at the front here so I'm actually just going to deal with the numbers here to begin with. You could deal with the x's first if you wish. Um, I'm just going to go for the numbers here because we've got 10. So we get 10 subtract 7. 10 subtract 7 is equal to 3. So I'm going to put 3 down and then if we then look at our x's we've got minus 10 x's take away 14 x's. And if you've got minus 10 x's and you take away another 14 x's, altogether you'd have minus 24 x's. So that'd be minus 24 x's. Now in that one, if you did do the x's first, you would have got minus 10 x take away 14 x, that'd be minus 24 x, and then 10 take away 7, which would be 3. So you'd end up with minus 24 x plus 3 on the numerator, but I dealt with the numbers first. So just to mention these questions, that sometimes you might get things in a slightly different order, but it's still correct. If you wrote minus 24 x plus 3 on the numerator, it's exactly the same as this, just written the other way around. So it's not, I suppose, not exactly the same, but it's equivalent to it. Okay, and that's it. Now one thing I do notice here is that we can actually factorize the numerator. And that might mean that we can actually cancel this down a bit. So let's have a look and see, can we um, factorize the numerator and see what we get? So in terms of this, 3 minus 24x, they're both divisible by 3. So let's take the 3 out, so we'd have 3, and then in brackets. And then if we divide both of these by 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and then we'd have subtract, and then 24x divided by 3 would be 8x and then close brackets. And actually that bracket's not one of the two brackets on the denominator, so we're actually not gonna be able to cancel it down any further. So actually that would be our final answer. So the answer would be if we were asked to simplify 10 over 2x plus one, subtract seven over one minus x, the answer would be three brackets, one minus eight x over 2x plus one, and then in brackets, one minus x, and that's it. Actually just to notice here, because it didn't actually cancel down, that you probably could have left your answer in that format, but I actually would have factorized it just to see if I could cancel anything down, and that's quite important that if anything did cancel down, then you can actually simplify it a bit further, so it's important to check that and see if it does factorize. So I would just leave my answer as that. And that's it, so this has been the first part of our trilogy for GCSE Further Maths, looking at adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. I really hope you found this video useful, and if you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll also put a link in now in this video, a little thumbnail on this video, just so that if you can click it, it'll bring you straight to part two, the next part of this trilogy. So that'll be some slightly harder algebraic fractions. And that's it, so thanks very much for watching. Thank you, cheers, bye.